What is good? We're back. We got a full house tonight. We got Big D and Big Co on the mics. We're going to hit you with some 2024 Dynasty PPR rankings for your pleasure. Big D, what's good? Not much, man. I'm excited. To, uh, every every day is a day closer to the ball being hyped. So, but right now we're in prime Dynasty season. So let's go. Big Co, what he said. How you feeling? Doing, feeling great. All right. Prime dynasty season. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to go through these tier by tiers. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about some of our differences. This isn't going to be a show where we dive deep into all of the analysis of each one of these. We're just going to give you the list and roll through these players. Um, and then we'll have some other shows following up with uh, some of the, some, some more conversation uh, about the hows and whys. Uh, but to start this thing off, we're going to go tier one. And I think we're all kind of in line here. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference. Uh, I have Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, and Amon Ra St. Brown. Big D, is that where you're at? Yep. Same same players, just a little bit different. I flopped Lamb and Chase, but yep, all those are the top four in my ranking. Yeah, and I, I will say that mine aren't necessarily in order in tier. I just have them in a tier. Um, Big Go, you feeling the same way about that top tier? Yeah, absolutely. I think St. Brown's earned his way up there in my book, and some people may not have him there, but in that same tier, Justin Jefferson, obviously the most valuable to me. So he could literally be a tier of his own. Mm, but, yeah. you know, I, outside of that, if we just want to keep those four guys together, I think a lot of people are going to do that, and, and I have no problem following suit with that. Yeah, for the sake of not having 500 tiers, which is if right. I was doing it by myself, that's how I would do this. But yeah. uh, we lock them in a little a little lengthier here um and i i do believe i'm in ross st brown has, has earned it in here he's a 20 point per game guy not saying that anybody would trade i'm in ross st brown trade up for justin jefferson in this tier of course not you you'd be getting the plus plus there because it's hard to get jefferson but the thing with i'm in ross st brown is he is probably the most obtainable out of these assets right right so that's why he's really interesting he's been 20 points he's been great yeah not much to say about this top tier let's keep it moving here to tier two uh, in that one, I'm going Puka, Garrett, Marv Harrison, and I'm going A.J. Brown to uh, hit the last guy in that tier. Big D, where, where are you at with tier, T, tier two here? I think it was pretty much the same. Brown, uh, Puka, Garrett Wilson, um, but I did have Tyreek Hill in, in, this, in this tier. All right. Uh, Big Co, where are you at on tier two? I got Puka, Marvin Harrison, Garrett Wilson. Um, and as we got this thing rolling, I'm probably a little bit too low on A.J. Brown, and you're about to tell me why. Well, I mean, right here we have our first kind of, you know, disparity here, discrepancy of, mm-hmm. of me and Big D up a little higher, Big Big Co down a little lower. Is there, you got a rationale for him being down there? Is it age-based? Is this Was that a young guy tier for you? What were your thoughts in general? That's pretty much it. I mean, that, that second tier there is Puka, Marvin, Garrett. They're all super young and super filthy. We think Neighbors is going to do that. We think, you know, some other people could do that soon. But those are obviously Harrison hadn't done anything on the NFL field yet. But Puka is, you know, all you could ask for. And Garrett Wilson is, you know, ridiculous without any quarterback yet. That's my young man tier, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and A.J. Brown is a little bit lower because he's 27. Just turned 27 on just turned June 30th. 27, just turned 27. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just... I think you you summed it up really good when we were kind of arguing about this. It's like if 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 Tyreek Hill was 26, just turned 27, how high up would he be? And that's basically kind of how you framed it to say AJ Brown just turned 27. You know, absolutely slayed it last year. Took the next step in in the uh, with the Eagles, and obviously they fell down going towards the end of the season. But just the way AJ Brown crushed it last year, I feel like I'm probably a little bit too low on AJ Brown. I just feel like. You can't send and you're not trading A.J. Brown. Nobody's giving you Puka for A.J. Brown. Nobody's giving you Marvin Harrison for A.J. Right. Brown. And we'll, and we'll dive into some of that in another episode. And then we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit at the end of this about how yep. like kind of we view this and, and the thought process behind the ranking. Because there's a million different ways you could rank these guys and, and categorize how you rank them. Big D, I, it seems like you got confidence in A.J. Brown. I have confidence in A.J. Brown. Uh, it's, you know, at some point, 
you know, AJ Brown, much like St. Brown could have been down at the tier by himself at the bottom of the, of that tier, I believe. Sure. Uh, but I, you know, I threw those guys up in the bottom of that tier because I believe that they're elite. AJ Brown was having a great season last year that the Eagles kind of fell off midway through the season. We saw AJ Brown's, you know, game log plummet down, uh, you know, from from where the ridiculousness was because there was a while there where a cd lamb or aj brown you know mid-season that was some of their early on or first third of the season you were having that conversation when he was just having these monster games right i don't think great does it justice what aj brown was doing. outstanding yeah I outstanding mean, still, elite still a little low um and it was 26 so now he's 27 just turned 27 so this whole until next year at this time he'll be 27 um and, and we're seeing guys be studs until 30 32 so i'm not uh, an aj brown fits that profile for me i guess moving forward i'm excited about kellen moore so i don't think we talk enough about how you know coordinators moving around can change things and we just expect people to good teams to go on well the eagles lost good core coordinators and obviously weren't great uh, yeah maybe great uh, and weren't ready to replace them they hadn't been there long enough maybe people hadn't learned the system yada 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 uh, but now Kellen Moore comes in. And, and one thing that I did notice, and, and Dwayne McFarland did a good job of pointing this out recently today, yesterday on Twitter, almost motion in receivers in motion. He he did somehow, some way kind of had it where it's like okay, it's almost like worth Kellen like 50 percent more PPR points or some something, some crazy number like that when in motion. And if you look at it, the Eagles were and, and I'm maybe maybe I'm misquoting that, but it was. A percent, a decent percentage point more PPR points when your guys in motion. Mm -hmm. Eagle and AJ Brown's good in motion. Eagles were dead last or second to last in motion. Kellen Moore was third or fourth on with the Chargers last year in motion. So I think we could see an even bigger jump. I know Kellen Moore probably people are probably a little off of him. He was hot for a minute. I think he's going to come back here and make another play uh, to for to get some buzz. So. Uh, you know, little older, but elite production here. So big D. Uh, yeah, final we got to we got to stop saying little older guys. Come on, I mean, he's twenty seven. <laughs> this is prime time. You know, wide receiver uh, production wise. Like we're we're trying to win championships here, even though we're playing dynasty. And this dude is like, I mean, that offense last year was pretty decent. That defense last year was horrible. Um, they were in shotgun. I don't know what the percentage is, but I would off the top of my head say 95% of the time with like you just were talking about no motion and he still was a top five wide receiver last year. So for me, he's a, he's a, if you put money on it, he's a candidate to be wide receiver number one this upcoming season, yeah. which could be a hot take for a lot of people. But I mean, you saw the beginning of the season, how they had the scheme out when the defense was playing good, what, what was looking and Kellen Moore did pretty decent with that Chargers team with the amount of injuries and, and, and the, we'll say the obstacle of the head coach. Um, like I know that he didn't come in and change the game in LA, but he, he definitely, um, he definitely kept them in and they had to do a lot of, a lot of things to, to keep up with the, with the other teams there. So yeah, I mean, AJ Brown, man, he's, he's, he's close to that tier one for me to be completely honest with you. I could, you guys were talking about breaking down tiers. I could definitely put him in like a, with a St. Brown, right? I could drop St. Brown down. If I, if yeah. I could only have the top three, I could drop St. Brown down and put AJ Brown with him. Cause he's just, he's right there. And the, the problem that I have with him is kind of his play style is, um, you know, old school Julio Jones, where it's kind of all or nothing in attitude, a but, uh, just, he's kind of an all or nothing, um, type of guy. But I think in the last couple of years that nothing has, yeah. the, and when I say nothing, lot. right, that's, that's the floor, right? He's, he's definitely, up that floor and i mean new contracts all around mm -hmm. jalen hurts the each year you're looking at the stats it looks like they're getting more and more in sync so for me the sky's the limit with aj brown yeah i i i, I like that big d i like i like saying that he's probably closer to the top than the bottom and and you know i we we got to put some respect on it. i think just because of the way that he finished is keeping him out of more people's mouths of being the top and including ours you know. Yeah, and the thing is, is that, and, and we got to remember that it's not just the way he finished; it's the way Eagles. the Eagles finished. They were they, the nest was destroyed, so they're they're in trouble there towards the end of the year. So. Yeah. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreoncom dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. 
or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. So, Big D, you have Tyreek in this hill, or t- Tyreek hey, on the hill. in this yeah. tier. You're, you're on that hill. Uh, yeah, with talk Tyreek. about old. Now we can talk about old. But, yeah, you know, like. uh, let, let's go to <laughs> tier three real quick. Uh, for for, it. for everybody. So for tier three for me, I got Chris Olave, Jalen Waddle, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, and Tyreek Hill. Big Co, what do you got here on tier three? Tier three is an, it's a small one for me. It's Neighbors and AJ Brown. And I everything you just said about AJ Brown, AJ Brown probably needs to be up in my tier two. You know, Big D's rant started with AJ Brown's not that old. He just turned twenty seven. If he's given us three more years of prime, that's you know, mm-hmm. fantastic. Him versus those other guys, three more years of his prime, these guys will be 26 then, and he'll be 29, 30 then. You know, that's kind of just the way it goes, but I like that. So my tier three is smaller, Malik Neighbors and A.J. Brown. Malik Neighbors just being that new unstoppable force that's coming into the league that's supposed to get a ridiculous amount of targets for the Giants this year. I have a hard time trying to figure out where to put, you know, like you said, there's no reason Waddle and Olave have, haven't earned to be in that spot right there. I just feel like the value of neighbors right now is just so much, just just top notch. Yeah, and again, we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this show here. You had Tyreek in this in the tier two. I have Tyreek in tier three, and Big Co does not even have Tyreek in tier three. I'm gonna assume he's in your tier four. Absolutely. Okay. Big tier uh, four coming. Big up. Big D, who you got in, in tier three, and then we'll maybe double back on Tyreek for a second. Yeah, um, I've got my take lock tier right here. No, I'm just joking. Uh, I got Nico Collins, Chris Olave, Ayuk, uh, Marvin Harrison, and Michael Pittman. Ooh, you got that's a spicy one for big. You got to put a little spicy pepper on the end of that thing. I like that. Yeah, El Caliente. Yeah. So why why Tyreek in tier two there for for you? You just you're not worried about the age or what? What are your th- what's your thought process there, Big D? Yeah, I mean, when I build out my rankings, I'm not, I, you know, I know that Dynasty, we're always like draft the wide receiver because you're going to have them for 12 years. And I, I just that's not the way I play. I don't I, you know, my original Dynasty team, I don't think I have a single player on there that I originally drafted. So for me, it's also about the the upside of when you're building and constructing your team and winning that championship. And Tyreek is he's one of one, man. I, I know that that gets thrown around sometimes, but there's not a lot of players like him. I, I still think he's got, you know, obviously this year, next year, and he's was, you know, talked about, oh, I'm going to retire. But now he's seeing the money that these wide receivers are going. And all of a sudden you hear him going, well, you know, a new contract might might not be the worst thing. Right. So he's still fast. He's still the cheetah. The thing about Tyreek that sets him apart is there's a lot of wide receivers that are fast, but he he's every year improved on his route running. He does the little thing. So even if he loses a step in speed, I still think that he can make that up in ability and agility. So so that's why I have him up. It, it's it's kind of a gamble because he's 30. He's older. But but I do believe that he's an outlier. Um, I, I, you know, nobody else in that tier is even close to his age. And, and that's just simply because I think that he's another one that could be that wide receiver one overall could anchor your team. And I believe he can do that for a while. Like still, I I don't think it's just this year. I still think he's got at least two, possibly three or four years left in him. Maybe, maybe not at that top one wide receiver one Mm -hmm. in the league fantasy wise overall, but, but definitely in the top, you know, top, 12 for the next couple years higher in the top 12 and then maybe down towards the um you know end wide receiver one starting wide receiver two as he gets a little older uh, but i mean it depends on his play calling and who's who's calling the plays because he's like i said he's he's just he's a he's a great route runner too we always talk about his speed but part of the reason why he's open so much is because of the route that yeah. you know it's because of his feet so the combination of who's calling plays and and his his style they they, they went and grabbed him and, and they're going to use him and hey when you have 10 kids you, yeah. All of a sudden, that money wasn't quite as long as it used to be. So you, <laughs> yeah. you'd be like, yeah, I might need another sixty mil. Yeah, uh, big yeah, be- so low. He said Tyreek. that before the inflation. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's I mean, it's relative. I don't think it's so low. I think uh, you know, if you, you look at, I'm looking at Big D's ranks there. Like you know, you, he's got there's Tyreek Hill right there beside. Obviously, AJ Brown's up there, and he probably is a little bit. He's a tier below for me, so AJ's in my tier three. But you know, like he said, Tyreek Hill. He's seven years older than Garrett Wilson and maybe nine years older than Puka, you know? So like two years ago we did this and it was Cooper cup and Devonte Adams was like my 
old man championship winning tier one B. Yeah. You know, the tier one A was Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and tier one B was like, hey, go win some championships. Two years later, they're like eight rounds dropped mm-hmm. of value. So, like, it's the, to me, it's not – I completely agree with everything. I Definitely Tyreek's one one And I've said this a couple times. Like, if you could go back five years ago, everything stays the same, and you could let me pick one person, it's Travis Kelsey, right? The second player – Jay just had a screen up that showed the last four years of, of production from Tyreek Hill. Absolutely ridiculous. Look at that PPR position rank. Two, two, six, two in the last four years. Yeah. Like top, top three. Yeah. You know, he's like, so he if you could go back and give me five years, I, I'll go back. I'll take Travis Kelsey first. I'll take Tyreek Hill second, maybe. Mm. You know, if everything stays the same in the last five years. But he is 30 now. Mm. So, like, I, to me, it's just like I, I can't do it. Don't get me wrong. It is a two, three year window for sure. But, you know, I just can't have him in the same tier as a Marvin Harrison and a Puka who are, you know, eight years younger. It's yeah. just, it just, I can't do it. And, and you can see it in your ability to obtain Tyreek Hill versus those other guys. So, yeah, well, I mean, it, this all comes down, rank. This rankings come down to approach of what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, Tyreek Hill could very well be the, top five wide receiver I, you know i think if tyreek's in the hill or tyreek's in the league i think for the next three years he t- stays a top six wide receiver like i, 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 I don't I, disagree i do know, not disagree i, I just I, tyreek hill so, is pound for pound the toughest player in the league i got him with all those other young guys but i do have him at the bottom much like i've had aj brown at the bottom here and st brown i know i said i don't have these guys in order but the guys at the bottom on these last couple it's all kind of a theme of like hey I could have had these guys up or down a little or in their own tier, really. I can't push Tyree Kill down any further for me. That's the way that I like. It's like, I, look, I'm probably not drafting him. And if this like if I had a color coded sheet, this would basically be, he'd be in red being like, hey, unless you're going in to for the next this year, this league starting and you're going in for the next two, three years right off the rip to go win then which you I can't be. fuck with Tyreek I don't um, get I mean I don't, I don't have a problem with that at all like you should be it's just like even even in you if you put up a a, a, a draft and you put them in order and I, I, I like to draft against myself every year just to really flush out my rankings like all right if I'm taking this so like who's better than me you know <laughs> it's it's there's Tyreek Hill is is nobody absolute stud and he should be there it's you know, Father Time is. Yeah. Oh, I, I completely. I, I'm with you 100. But I like what you're doing. You got your tier, and at the end of your tier two is your older guy that's that deserves tier to be three. there. No, no, but your tier two. Oh yeah. You got AJ Brown there. You got the three younger guys, and AJ Brown's in the tier two, and that's because he's 27. And you got your tier four, tier three. You got a slew of of awesome young guys, and then Tyreek Hill's there, and he's he yeah. like you said, he's at the end of that tier because he's 30. I just I, that's that's cool. I'm just, I'm a, apparently I'm a tear down on the older guys of each one yeah. of those sections. Well, and we'll, we'll circle back to this, and we'll probably make the podcast go ten minutes longer at the end. But I think it's a good conversation to have, and and we'll we'll kind of bring some of this back when we're kind of talking about the hows and whys we rank guys a certain way, and we did a little bit there. But let's keep it moving. Let's go tier four. In tier four, I have. Nico Collins, Devonta Smith, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, Michael Pittman, and DJ Moore, and and Pittman and Moore. I sh- I didn't know what to do with. I, I stuck them up here. I, I had them in a tier of their own, but for sake of not having again a million tiers, I, I stuck I stuck Moore and Pittman up there mostly because I know what I'm getting out of those two guys. Those guys are bona fide target earning studs on their team. The guys all up above them are are good players, but you know a lot of those guys right now. We think Nico can be a one, and we think Ayuk can be a one, and, L- and Drake can be a one. And if Smith wasn't on a team with AJ Brown, he could be a one. But Pittman and Moore have been a one. They're a little older. Um, Ayuk's, you know, up there as, with those guys as well. But that's kind of why I stuck them in there. You know, when I'm when I'm going the f- late fourth round in a super flex tight end premium draft, Michael Pittman and DJ Moore there. You know, they're, they're the guy that I know that I can count on uh, to to anchor me down and get me some points. Big Co, who you got in tier four here? I got Alave, Tyreek Hill. Waddle, Roma Dunze, Drake London, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Ayuk, Devonta Smith. So it's a pretty big tier. Um, it's it's massive. I don't know if Jay Wayne can fit it on the screen. Had to go two uh, lines. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> it just six to a tier, okay? Keep right, right. For the six person <laughs> max. Six person max. It's fine, it's fine. Do you? Not necessarily in a specific order. Yeah, like you said, I just so rankings, guys. Yes, they are. That's the order. Everyone, okay? That's your list. Yeah, for me, Pittman, DK, list. Pittman, DK Metcalf, and DJ Moore made the next tier. I could, I couldn't get them into this tier. Yeah, 
Yeah, again, mine aren't in order of the tier either, except for the guys at the end. Just added conversation. The Big D, for tier sure, four. For where sure, are you at? this is the order. Tier four, we got Waddle, Neighbors, Odunze. It's a big one. I, I wanted to make uh, Jay also work on this one. So uh, Waddle, Neighbors, Odunze, Flowers, JSN, DK Metcalf, Devontae Smith, and Drake London. All right. Big, big time tier. Two Seahawks like it. We got Zay Flowers in there making an appearance. So I, that's, a, that's a big tier. So we, now you're starting to see some diversity mm -hmm. in, in all of our tiers here. Trade back. That's the point here. Is that um, big old tier four? I, I, I like a lot of these guys in these next two tiers, really. You know, no, I go the other way, Jay. You trade up and get more of them. Mm, yeah, mm. I like a lot of these guys. Um, let's let's talk a little Drake London here. It seems like he's ready to be a one and really break out. I feel like everybody's got him positioned. Some people might think this is too high. Some people might think it's too low. Uh, what's your position on, on Drake London, Big Co? I mean, obviously, I think the Kirk Cousins edition is fantastic. It's, mm. it's everything, not only Kirk Cousins edition, but moving away from the Arthur Smith offense of what's going on here, and you bring in Penix, so you basically guaranteed so much better the, the, the floor of the quarterback play mm. just got on the elevator, yeah. right, and pushed a couple buttons up. So, like, everything that the Falcons have been dealing with for the past two years and everything Drake, Drake London's been dealing, been dealing with, with yeah. for the past two years, like, they did bring in an old quarterback with a bad foot. But they also brought in Penix. So, like, they got – I mean, I think Kirk Cousins is already out there doing work. So, like, I, I think the, the Falcons offense is going to hit the ground running. And I think that Drake London is an absolute stud. And uh, I think that we're going to get to see it on display this year. Yeah, so I guess I brought up Drake. Uh, the best way to, for me to sum it up is it feels like he's the biggest – like, all these guys have kind of broken out somewhat. Drake has had some bits and pieces, but it feels like he's ready to break out and, and be a – a possible tier jumper big d what's your thoughts take on on drake london this year part of the reason why he's at the bottom of my my tier here is i i've got to see it just kind of like what you said um the breakout I, I think the talent's there for sure but i mean you look at that offense last year and you look at the wide receiving core that he was dealing with or that that was helping him quote unquote mm -hmm. dan jefferson scotty miller mac hollins i mean none of these strike fear into me right, right. And, and then obviously you've got Bijan, you've got Pitts, you got Kirk Cousins coming off an Achilles should be okay but who knows he's an older back um, Penix is a rookie there's a lot of change going on there so it's mm -hmm. not just that but but they did bring in Zach Robinson you know from the Rams as the offensive coordinator yeah. and he I think can get the potential out of out of London but I, I need one more year to see it because what I've seen I've liked but I don't know if he's, he, you know, he might be for me like closer to Pittman ceiling than AJ Brown ceiling, um, if that makes sense. You know, I think he's a really decent player. I think he can, you know, he could produce, but I don't know if he can take control of that offense with some of the star power that's on there already. You know what I mean? So, so th yeah, that's my take. I, I, he's not a bad player. I think he's probably, you know, easily could probably hop into tier three for me. I just don't see him hopping into tier two right now, but he's 22 years old too. Right, now we, right. now we talk about the opposite end of young. I mean, 22, you know, you, you give me Drake London in five years at 27, he could easily be in that top two top tier discussion because he's, you know, he's going to continue to develop and it sounds like they've got good coaching around him now. And hopefully that continues. So he, he's kind of a wild card for me. Don't hate him. Just don't. Same age as a lot of rookies coming in, you know, yeah. same, yeah. same age as a lot of rookies said so he's already got two years of experience and, Yep. And two years of dealing with bad quarterback play, so now he can really appreciate what he's got. Yeah, I just went and watched some Drake London tape and just the bad throws and the bad, you know, just mm -hmm. it's absolute oh, it's trash. Horrible. And then from yeah. what he was converting and making happen on that team was, was absolutely outstanding. So I think this, you know, the only thing you're missing with Drake is potentially like elite top end speed, but I think he separates really well. Then when he doesn't, he's got the size and the frame to be able to. So if he can get a quarterback, and then you got somebody who's Kirk, who turns wide receivers into PPR machines, especially the lead dog. I think Drake is clearly the lead guy there. I mean, obviously Pitts is gonna, I think, have a role too. But it just seems like he's Drake is ready to explode here, um, and, and probably one of the the most interesting wide receivers of uh, non-rookie of the of the off season here. definitely must watch tv falcons week one yeah all right let's go yeah. uh last tier here i think for everybody right yep so my last tier here i got t higgins i got jsn i got zay flowers i got tank dell i got dk metcalf i got rashi rice jordan addison and then pickens so people are probably gonna have a problem with addison being in there but 
for the most part, I view a lot of these guys as very similar. Um, there's certainly some different body types in there. T and Pickens. Pickens probably the most potential to have the biggest amount of rise. We've seen T be good. We've seen DK be good. And, and so just a lot of fun players in here. This is a pretty big tier. This gets into that like late fourth, fifth round when you're coming in super flex tight and premium startups. These guys are all there and you have to make a choice. And I kind of view them all the same, which is why I have this tier yeah. uh, kind of so big. All, all the same, not uh, obviously the same player, but I think you can get similar production out of a lot of these guys there's certainly guys i think you could check more ceiling for and that's going to be personal preference for for certain people and what they like and who they like so big d tier five for you yeah tier five for me is still still a work in progress but the the players that i've got there are jordan addison higgins rashid rice dj moore brian thompson jr lad mcconkey Jaden reed and tank dell all right big co I got the three man tier. I got the guys who've been here and done it, um, but not and not too old yet. Pittman, DK Metcalf, DJ Moore. So those are my fourth, fifth, sixth round right there. I know I need to grab a guy who I know is going to be able to produce for me, and they're not thirty years old yet. We know what they are. They're really, really good. Yeah, and that's where that's my 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 veteran, really, really good guys. Yeah, Give me that tier six too while you're at it. Yeah, you. might as well finish this out. It's long, uh, Jay. Wayne, I don't know how if if you got enough. I just uh, went to uh, JSN. You went to JSN. That's enough. You can you can, you can list fine. them all. So it starts with Pickens, who like you you know everybody expects and most people expect a, a huge uh, target increase and therefore some really really fun numbers this year. Addison, T. Higgins, Rasheed Rice, Zay Flowers, JSN, Worthy, McConkey, Thomas Jr., Keon Coleman, Jaden Reed. That's a lot of names. It, that's like what Casey said. You get into the draft, a bunch of players right here. Pickens could absolutely smash or he could, you know, be, you know, you can give him some head scratching situations with if things aren't going right in Pittsburgh. But and all the all the rookies are in there. So just so much potential there. And I think you can, you know, pick your poison right there. Yeah. No, I I, I left the rookies out. They'd be in the next tier for me. But Big D's got a mix of some rookies. You got some rookies in there real quick. Last thing before we talk about these you know how how we made these rankings and 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 that conversation a little bit big co you had tank dell probably a little higher than everybody else give us just a quick second on on tank dell's love affair <laughs> yeah i mean i i think uh he's in love I, I think this is it's not only just like his points per game when he was in there as a rookie or how fast he got up to like 90 percent snap share i don't have to talk about any of that stuff we all know how ridiculously awesome his rookie season was going before he got hurt I just take you down the narrative street of it's this it's the closest thing I got right now of reminding me of how Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey were acting towards each other five years ago and every day since mm -hmm. they're always at the games together they were always doing this together it was if you saw if you saw Patrick or Travis and they weren't together it was almost weird you know that when and T it, Swift it, comes along and, and ruins everything right so <laughs> and when they're 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 all together too they're, they're all together I'm just kidding you know so it's like I just feel like Tank Dale is right there tied to the hip of Stroud and you know in that clip that everybody saw where stroud and cowboys defensive end was talking michael about Parsons. mike him and michael were building their teams that i am gonna build my defense that i want to build i'm gonna build my offense that i want anybody in the league and they're all dra gr grabbing like the all pros at every position and stroud didn't skip a beat he was like i'm gonna take this guy out here and my ex and i'm gonna take this guy out here and i'm gonna put tank in the slot and he just kept going bang 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 and he listed his you know it was like he didn't skip a beat it was yeah. tank and like it's just that's his boy and sure stefan Diggs. Right. this is dynasty Diggs could muck it up a little bit this year sure. i don't expect sure. Dale to get 14 targets a game but like tied to stroud they're boys and it's just like i can see this going like tank dale played in houston in college i could see like tank dale and completely emerging and being a complete superstar and then taking a team friendly deal to stay with stroud for seven mm. years you know like I could definitely yeah, take see no this team happen. Friendly deal, but you could still get paid. I think them boys There's, just yeah. I yeah. I I, I, like I didn't the, say he was going to play for five hundred thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's not gonna <laughs> he's not gonna be out there demanding. You know, if he plays well enough, I don't know if he's going to go make thirty mil. But I'm just saying, like, we got a couple years for sure, and I just assume already twenty four. I I'm, I would like <laughs> to say I would like to say that I'm I can see Tank Dell sticking around with the Texans for a while. No, it's it's a small gap I think for me down moving him down a little. But I agree with pretty much everything you said, and I love the narrative street. Of course, why not? Uh, I think it's silly to not take some of that into consideration. Obviously, we don't know 
everything, but uh, that that's that's a, that's a good point. And and it's dynasty. Everybody loves to, like you said, let Stefan Diggs ruin everything. And it's like I'm, nah, bro. I'm still sky high on Nico and Tank. I don't know how you could not have fun with that anyway. You know, there's so like you said, right. we just listed. I just I just went down a long list. He listed five hundred guys. Yeah, there, there's so many. There's a, there's we have a this lot. Twenty four. We have a lot of we had a lot of really really good players at wide receiver position. Yeah, and yeah. so like you got to elevate somebody and you got to drop somebody down. Like for me, it's Tank and Stroud, and and they started running the ball really heavy to begin the season. The pass rate ticked up, you know, as the season went on. They got more, you know, comfortable with Stroud doing more, and I just think that takes the uh, next step this year and i don't think they're going to start the season and just you know be overly heavy weight on the running back touches in the first five to six weeks of the season with everybody kind of pulling their hair mm-hmm. out and be like why are they not throwing the ball more so more pass attempts more you know catches for everybody let's go tank deal yeah well I, i'm down with it all right let's take five minutes here at the end and discuss just just Kind of, you know, Big Co, you got into it a little bit, and there, there's differences of how people play, difference of how you rank these guys, right? It basically comes down to, um, you know, are, is, are your tiers going to be strictly value-based, which is, you know, probably a little bit more to what Big Co is leaning to and what he's talking about. Is it going to be a mixture of, you know, how, how they finished last year, the results, the points per game, all that stuff? How are you going to mesh those two things together? Obviously, I'm not out here building crazy models that give you the the <laughs> absolute right answer so what are you doing you know there's a lot of context and film watching and adp and all this stuff built into it i think really for me how this comes down to is approaches right big co is the way he's going to talk about these guys and the way he's going to rank these guys is going to be on value because he's trades a lot that's what he likes to do that's what he wants to play the game that's where his edge is Somebody like Jason over here, he might make only two trades a year in a league. So he's going to value guys who he knows he can start and score points. And so he's going to put a little bit more premium on guys in that regard. So A.J. Brown and Tyreek Hill are going to have more value to somebody like Jason than they do Big Co. Because he's not terribly worried about the age. where and But he also isn't worried about like, oh, well, Neighbors is a way better value than that guy. And I could turn Neighbors into this and this plus. Um, that's not necessarily how he's going to view things. I'm working on the show. I can't make a bunch of <laughs> trades. Okay, I gotta, I gotta pick players that are going to last it's me. A, you know? It's it, and and it's okay. And, and you are always in the mix. And you I put together, you put together, twice. you put together good teams. And there's a bunch of different ways to play this. But that's, I think that's really the root of of what causes people to be so upset about rankings and. Dip, but it's just like I try to comment, put put both of those things kind of together. Um, a little bit in, in how I'm ranking these and be thoughtful of those things. But it's like it's really, really hard to not be super value based because we're doing a ton of mocks and we're doing and I'm, and I'm all over the place and I'm in a bunch of leagues and I'm in the community and I see what people are valuing. So it's really hard not to put the premium on that. Um, so right. and, and that's a really important thing. You, you, you have to understand the value. And I know you'll come in the, in the comment section and be like, I can't trade any of these players for those players because, you know, they want way too much. And, and a lot of times in your home leagues, value will be skewed. They're not dialed into Twitter. They're not in it all the time. They're not doing mocks. They're not staying up on it. So they're going to have off values. What you need to do is kill those people with kindness mm. until... The value that they have swings heavily in your favor. So don't quit trying to trade with them. Don't right. be assholes about whatever they're saying. Yeah. And just wait until the value swings so far in your favor that everybody else is mad about the trade you just made with them. Yeah. And and, and uh, go ahead, Big D. I, I think another important piece of this is it doesn't matter whose rankings you're following. Hopefully you're making your own. But um, if you're looking at rankings, um, for me, I've never thought of rankings as ADP. Like, you know, if you look at my rankings, I'm not saying that I'm going to draft X player before X player. Um, I'm saying that this is a player I would rather have on my team if I'm if I'm going forward for a championship run. Right. Like and that's kind of you were talking about how you're constructing your team. It's like Tyreek Hill versus um, let me go back to my Tyreek Hill versus Garrett Wilson. There's no there's no comparison when we're talking values. Right. When we're talking like drafting or or that. But but Tyreek Hill plus something goes to Garrett Wilson, right? So mm-hmm. the plus there is important from the trade perspective. But on the flip side, it's it's also important to know how you construct your roster. So, you know, when you're thinking about creating or listening to other people's rankings, the one thing you got to realize is how you construct your roster. Are you playing it really safe with your wide receivers? And where, But 
for me, and I've said this on um, previous podcasts, you can't always go to consensus. You can't always go to the middle because then you're going to be in the middle, right? You you have to take your shots. You've got to find players that you you feel strongly for that can that can pop off for you. And so so for me, like um, I I think my wide receiver rankings are a little bit more conservative um, in 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 certain spots and then you know really out there and others because i'm looking at it as a a two wide receiver with a flex play you know or i'm gonna get my my points from the running back position or you know that kind of thing so so i i i just say no matter if it's our rankings if you're looking at other people's rankings you know also take into effect your own side of this you know if you're just starting out then you don't you're not going to know that and then look at everybody's and make a consensus and pick the players that you like that are in decent values. But yeah. as you start to play this game for a while, you know, don't, you know, don't just rely on other people to tell you how to play the game, like play the game, how you want to play the game, right? Put, put the players in the spots that you want to, even if you don't think the value is there. Um, now I'm not saying go trade, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to go trade Garrett Wilson for Tyree kill straight up right now. That's, that's not what I'm saying, but, but I'm saying you can start to find um, you can start to find those deals and start to find the way that you construct your championship roster and go forward with it. Yeah, that works. That kind of works for you. So, Big Co, why don't you hit us with a little chit chat and then we'll, we'll get on out of here? Well, just like you said, I mean, you, you, his Tyreek Hill and Garrett Wilson are side by side in his rankings and he wouldn't trade Garrett Wilson for Tyreek Hill um, or you can't you can't give Tyreek Hill away and get Garrett Wilson back straight up. So that that's just kind of how it's kind of how I came up with Malik Neighbors and AJ Brown in, in tier three. I play the, you know, nobody would give you neighbors game. Nobody's giving you a lot nobody's giving you neighbors if for Alave. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody's giving you neighbors for Tyreek Hill. Now they're every league is different. You might have that one guy that's won three out of four years and he's got he just somehow he's traded around and he's got the pick to take neighbors and he could give that neighbors away to get Tyreek Hill and he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you four out of five years. Let me try that again. You know, this it can happen whenever when I say nobody, it can happen, but most likely that's I you know, I try to set it up and that's how the when I in my tier six and it was too long for you know, everybody says to me people. But all those rookies are in there because nobody's gonna give you Jordan Addison just absolutely slayed it last year, and he's getting hated because mm, yeah. uh, he's every he's getting hated on because he did everything without Justin Jefferson. Too what many if touchdowns. He got, what if he got drafted to, on a team without Justin Jefferson, and that was like the line he put up, ridiculous, you know, catches yards and touchdowns. He crushed it. He had too many touchdowns, like Jay said. You can't have that many touchdowns as a rookie. It's, Regression you know, drink. Or if you're or if you're Puka, Puka. If you're Puka, you're awesome. If you're Jordan Addison, you suck. <laughs> so. But nobody's given you if you're on the clock at one nine, one ten, one eleven, one twelve 112 in a in a super flex draft when it's when you can take Lad McConkey, you can take Worthy, you can take Brian Thomas, nobody's gonna give you that pick for Jordan Addison. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's why those players to me, like you can these these tiers are tough when and so like I do try to blend a little bit of trade value and what I'm gonna get out of this guy week one and for the next year or five years, how long, you know, obviously, you know, I have no problem Tyreek Hill being the best wide receiver in the league. Justin Jefferson just six years younger and he's been, you know, crushing. It's just Rasheed Rice suspended last, you know, a week before the suspension at the before the uh, incident happens. You can't get you can't give you know the one ten one eleven in a rookie draft to get Rasheed Rice. Yeah because he's too hot yeah you know well i mean if Devonte adams would have stuck in a situation where he had a quarterback he'd still be up here i'm, I'm sure I don't you know you know what i mean I like he disagree he'd still he wouldn't be I, w- I wouldn't say he'd be up in in you know tier two or whatever but like he wouldn't be fucking not even he wouldn't be around 11 draft pick you know what yeah. i mean like tyree kill is just in an in a just a beautiful situation with you know the uh, the right play call or the right system and, and the right um you know dna to, to yeah. pull it out sure no doubt about it and i mean if aj brown you know tears his knee week one he's only 27 again he's only 27 again but if tyreek hill tears his knee week one yeah. oh he's 30 you know yeah. so oh, like sure. that, the cooper cup drop with the hamstring issues yeah. you know you couldn't get you couldn't sell cooper cup fast enough last year when it's all of a sudden we don't know when he's going to be ready because his, his hamstring is hurt. Mm-hmm. You couldn't sell him in Dynasty at that point. Yeah. Yeah, but on the flip side, I mean, and I completely agree with what you're saying, but you also got to be cautious on some of these these rookie wide receivers. Now, this year's class seems to be different, but like we're talking about Ladd and we're talking about these other players. I mean, you look back just a couple years ago, you got Jamison Williams coming out of the draft class that was ranked, to, uh, you know, two, was ranked pretty high. You got uh, 
uh, Burks over there in, in Tennessee mm-hmm. yeah. who replaced AJ Green. You got Dotson. So so there there's there's players that you know you think that you're going to draft this wide receiver and you're going to have a long runway of, of value, but there are times when it just doesn't work out either. Now that's part of the strategy of getting into the draft. And and I would say that we here at the FFD have done a really good job of identifying talent and, and finding those, those players that are going to have that long-term value. But um, I'm just saying, if you're going off consensus, like there's a problem with the older players, but there's also a problem with the younger players that I think um, gets kind of pushed aside because they're younger and we always have a new crop coming in. And mm-hmm. it seems no, like that's a uh, wide point. receiver wise is it's like they, I mean, every year it's like, oh, this crop is awesome. Oh, yeah. whoa, well, wait a minute, this crop is awesome. Oh, wait a minute, this crop is. Well, awesome. that's a whole other oh. discussion I want to have, but I don't. Have, we don't have time sure. for that. But yeah, you know, I, but I, I agree with you. And and but the the only the the only trade off you have there is at least with some of the higher end ones, you do have some insulation. Like Marv, it almost really doesn't matter what happens a ton this year. I mean, JSN. Yeah. But you know, JSN is just in a situation that nobody really loves. They're not sure about the play caller. Nobody's excited about it, so JSN gets pushed down. I still like. I think JSN's great, so I'm buying JSN. I'm keeping JSN up, up high. But you know, Malik Neighbors could you know certainly not live up to the hype and be people would be upset about the situation and down three rounds next year. You know what yeah. I mean? So you you know, I like I like it, Big D, Big Co. Last words. Well, I mean, like you said, we've done a good job of identifying talent. I think we've also done a good job of having trade shows of showing you how you don't necessarily have to take yeah. those draft picks and make them rookies. You take those draft picks and make them veterans and, and you pay a little extra and you get somebody like a stud. You know, I have no problem paying a little extra and, and go and get that same point per game expectation in a, in a veteran, right. but paying a little bit extra and making it a, a veteran that's 24, 25 instead of a veteran that's making 20, that's, that's 28, 29 years old. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate you. Be sure to uh, like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Uh, Five star review if you're listening on the pod. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I just we we said it. I think there's just so much more context really needed in the rankings, such as how you're drafting, who's there. You know, guys are are productive struggle guys. Guys are win now guys. All that stuff is kind of needed in the rankings. But people just you know they want they want a list. So we'll throw you a list. But there's really a lot of context and discussion that goes into the nuance of all these different parts and pieces and how to use them and uh, how to value them and, and what room you're in all, all can really, really weigh into um, how these guys pan out or very, how they break down. Very well said. I think if you look at my rankings that Jay Wayne put up on the screen, it's more applicable to trade value today. Yeah. I, I, and I, you've said that and then you brought it back just now. So a good way to say it, if you look at what I got up there, it's a better way to take that as as best asset available trade value and some of the stuff that casey and jay went did uh, and big d put together it'll they'll give you a lot better chance to win week one putting their guys ahead of my guys but my guys will give you a lot better chance to have a a solid asset moving forward and and being able to work around it yeah all right we got a five dollar holler on the patreon we got a free discord five dollar holler gets you discord extra episodes on patreon uh, lots of good extra stuff over there. Go, be sure to check that out. We appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. Peace.